Mr. Hitchcock, let me ask you a bit about your thoughts on violence on the screen and all that. It's interesting because that uh, clip we showed from Psycho uh, was from a film that was edited quite a bit when it was shown on primetime television. Some of the scenes were considered too... Some moments of scenes were considered too awful to show. In how those do you, days. How do you feel about that? Well, there's more permissiveness today, but don't forget that's ten years ago. Things were quite different then. You, you think if they showed Psycho now, they would st they would be able to show every scene oh, that you I shot? Oh, I think so, without a question, sure. Really? I, I doubt that, because they were, they were rather worried that we were showing anything tonight from that... Well, scene. there's a different approach for television than there is for movies. Oh, yes, I meant on television, that on television... Ah, no, no. Television, the same conditions apply to Still, yeah. Yeah, I see. I didn't uh, But I'm surprised, clear. really, that uh, in English television, when I was over there, they allow a certain amount of nudity on English television. Complete nudity on English television. Yes, considering yeah. the weather over there, I'm surprised. <laughs> they must heat the studio somewhere. I know what you mean about it. But Somebody it, it's asked true that... me the other day, how long did I think nudity would last on the screen? And I, if he wouldn't think me too vulgar in saying, I said that uh, all breasts sag eventually. <laughs> I expect. You have research to prove that? Uh... No, I'm afraid I don't. No. <laughs> uh, in, in, in that scene from Psycho, you had a curious effect that it seemed that, uh, that uh, Balsam seemed to be almost floating backwards, which added to the, the horror of it a bit. It was like a dream. He seemed to be almost in slow motion a bit as he fell backwards. And I realized the second time I saw it that that was where part of the fright came from. Well, uh, the point is that... Um, if a person falls, they are fighting the fall. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't just drop back. You know, if you're falling back, there's an effort to, to prevent it. And I think you get that effect there. But didn't you do something special in the shooting of that? Or did you have him suspended? Oh, well, it was, a, it was a double printed thing. It was. He didn't fall down a single stair. He sat in a very comfortable chair and just lay there like that. Is that right? Yes, we made the background first of moving down. I'd love to know how you did all, I've done all of those things. Well, a lot of the well, answers are in the trip. That's how earn their money, you see. Yeah. <laughs> By not having to do the things they're supposed to do. You, you, uh, you called actors cattle once in your career and um, offended a few well, of them. Well, I think at the time, I think I said, well, I was accused of calling actors cattle, mm -hmm. and I said that um, I would never say such an unfeeling, rude thing about actors at all. What I probably said was that all actors should be treated like cattle. <laughs> uh, I see. And, and you went on to do that. Uh, In a nice way, of course. Uh, yes. Fed them at the right hours and uh, brushed them occasionally. Well, uh, do you, uh, I, I know you, um, what one actress got you for that somehow by she once uh, had some cattle brought onto a set or something that was a famous the... carol lombard, carol lombard yes. yeah. and she was a woman with a great sense of humor mm -hmm. and i arrived on the set the first day of shooting and she'd had a corral built and in it were three live calves with the names of the actors on big discs around their necks yeah. You know it, 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 it is in finding out some of the things that you've done reading about them and all um, it's amazing how much is the director's work and how little the actors are needed. And uh, in a way, you, you, there's a devastating example you gave from a Russian filmmaker, Pudovkin. It yes. had to do with the actor's face and then the... Uh, well, uh, if I may interrupt you a moment, mm -hmm. Walt Disney had the right idea. If he didn't like the actors, he tore them up. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, you talked about the, the, the Russian filmmaker. Ah, the power of film. That, that, yeah. That's uh, how strong film can be. Yeah. Well, I did the production section for Encyclopedia Britannica for the yeah. last edition. And in it, I describe a scene such as in the picture Rear Window, yes, where you have a... James Stewart, a close-up of him, and he looks, you see, and you cut, we'll say, for example, a woman nursing a baby. Now you go back to Mr. Stewart, and he smiles. So what have you demonstrated? That he's a nice, benevolent gentleman. Now take the middle piece of film away, 
he looks, he sees, now cut to a girl in a bikini. And he smiles. Now he's a dirty old man. <laughs> and it's the exact same smile. Exact same smile, yeah. the same look. The subject has changed. Mm -hmm. And you said that there's even, even more dramatic example. That was the Russian filmmaker who showed an actor's face and then a dead baby. And they then did. the actor's face, uh, yes, and then a bowl of soup, and then the actor's face. And in each case, it was the same shot of the actor's face. But in the one seemed to be sorrow, and the other seemed to be hunger. Hunger, that's and quite could, true, yes, yes. So you could get an Academy Award performance for an actor with only one shot of him, really. Well, I did it years ago with an actress, and uh, I found her very difficult. And uh, I did all her close-ups and said, look here, look there, look down look across, move around. And go home. And go, then you may go home. And I brought in <laughs> another actress, yeah. and I used all her hands, and she was cutting meat, and, uh, and it was the prelude to a murder scene. And you just put everything around it? I used the hands only, yes. Gee. Is there a scene you wouldn't do over again? Are you, are you sorry you did? So I'm thinking of one specifically, the boy with the bomb. Well, that was because I made the terrible mistake of, of having a boy carry a bomb across the city. Mm -hmm. You, the audience, knew that it was a bomb. And I built it up and up until the various clocks and all the holdups. And you knew it was going to go off at one o'clock, but I let the clocks go one minute past one, two minutes, and work the audience up. And then I let the bomb go off. And he was on a bus and it blew the whole thing completely. And uh, I remember I was at the press show and a woman critic came up with both raised fists and said, how dare you do a thing like that? Even a hard-boiled critic was taken away with the whole thing. I'd made the mistake in not relieving them at the end of the suspense. In other words, if you mm -hmm. put an audience through the mill like that. You must relieve it. The bomb must be found and quickly thrown out of the window. Then it goes off out there and the audience are relieved. And if you had it to do over again? I'd never let the bomb go off. What would you do with the rest of the movie? Um, well, I mean, uh, well, that wouldn't be the last scene in the movie. No, that's true. But is it, was it because the re was it also because a child was killed in the scene that they thought it was too brutal? No, I don't think that's the reason. I think the reason is that uh, an audience gets worked up, yeah, and they need relief. For example, if anybody goes on a roller coaster, mm -hmm. they scream. It goes down the big dip and up and around. They're screaming all the time, but always get off giggling. Yeah. Or you go to the midway and you pay money to go into the haunted house. And skeletons jump up and the floor does all kinds of things, but they always come out giggling. Now the question, why do people pay money to be scared? Do you know the answer? Of course not. <laughs> I earn my living doing it. <laughs> Better not to question it. What would my starving wife and child do without us? <laughs> Or your starving self, for that. Yes, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> we, uh, by the way, I should explain, there's always somebody who misunderstands. A child was not killed in the making of the movie. It was in the scene itself, supposedly. Someone always writes in and has misunderstood.